way of me introducing Gil, I'll say that, that Gil found Stolka in a deserted warehouse, um, something that I'm now going to ask him to tell you a little bit more about. Thanks very much. Gil Duron. Um, in my global jerive in many cities in the world in the past three years, uh, I was wondering in what planners and architect um, has been calling uh, named urban voids, derelict areas, or dead zones. And one of the cities was Rome. Um, I was strolling along the Tiber and came to what looked like linear warehouse, uh, all covered with graffiti. I've been told that this was a squat of immigrants. I knocked on the door and um, they opened. They told me what they are doing there. And then I saw some drawings on the wall. I asked them, what is this? They said there is some architect working with them, but they are not here at the moment. Maybe I'll find them in the courtyard. I went to the courtyard. It was a very big courtyard, full with um, caravans of gypsies. It apparently was a gypsy camp, also squatting illegally on the land. Tried to talk with them and ask, do you know these architects? Um, where is their office? Is they, do they have any caravan here? Um, they couldn't really tell me, but they sent me to another squat across the square, uh, which was occupied by Kurdish immigrants. Um, I, with broken English and their broken English, trying to sort out where is Tolker office, they said, uh, get inside, you will find it. Um, I was going floor after floor, knocking on doors in some of the room where children and other women, other room people were praying, um, and they sent me up and up um, until I came to the roof, um, and they said, somebody there said, um, this is the office of Stalker. Um, the roof was uh, quite derelict. In the middle of it, a small blue swimming pool, children's swimming pool from plastic. Uh, Stalker wasn't there. Um, I in the end found Stalker through a lot of telephone calls. Um, and um, uh, I um, I got information that uh, although they don't have really an office and although they are based in Rome but are quite nomadic in uh, their intervention and in architecture, um, uh, they already exhibited in uh, Venice Biennale, the last Venice Biennale of architecture. They exhibited in Manifesta Three in uh, Ljubljana. Um, this summer they are going to exhibit, it, exhibit in uh, Viennese Biennale of Art and in SP1 in Brooklyn, New York. Um, I think I will leave everything else uh, to Lorenzo. Uh, and one warning, I don't think you hear the word architecture much in this lecture. Um, hello. I'm very pleased to be here. And um, I'm uh, presenting a uh, attempting to present Stalker work. Um, um, I feel very uncomfortable behind this barrier. Uh, what we try to do in our work is cut off with these barriers, and uh, I guess uh, I live with it, uh, with this contradiction. I wanted just to, um, this is our website, and I just wanted to uh, start from this uh, uh, quotation that comes from Tarkovsky. Tarkovsky made a movie named Stalker. We named the group after this movie. And uh, he says that maybe the zone is a very complex system of told. I have no idea what goes on in there in the absence of man, but as soon as someone arrives, everything goes highway. The zone is exactly how we created it, ourself, like the state of our spirit. But, uh, but what is happening uh, that does not depend on the zone, that depends on us. And this is Tarkovsky. Uh, Stalker, it's, uh, um, I, I, was, I wanted to start with this because Stalker, it's a, it's a group, but it's an open group. It's not defined in numbers, in uh, roles, and uh, in attitudes. It's uh, in between architects, some artists, some art historian, and uh, a dentist, uh, an astrophysician, and a geologist for the moment. 
And uh, supposedly, stalker work uh, relates with uh, uh, what's Celtic, but is not uh, uh, neo nihilist that looks towards chaos, but it's just uh, attempting to live with it, actually trying to create uh, um, uh, devices that produced uh, somehow uh, um, uh, cr creative, which means also order, creative, creative devices, which means also they produce kind of, uh, or uh, they try to attempt to uh, uh, produce order in a chaotic system. I will try to explain this uh, uh, through, the, through the lecture. Um, can we get to the slides? Okay, this is uh, uh, Stalker. We took the na this name Stalker because of our first main work. Our first main work as Stalker comes uh, after five years that we've been, we've been uh, wandering around the, the, the void uh, areas of the city of Rome. Everything started in 1919 when we, had in charge, we were in charge uh, uh, for three months. We have been in charge from the University of Rome because we occupied it. Democratically, the whole assembly of students decided to occupy the university. That was the big chance to get to know a lot of people and get to know people from other universities and especially from other disciplines. And, um, and uh, since then, uh, we've been doing a lot of works uh, uh, trying to get all these people together and we were trying to substitute the uh, uh, competitive paradigm with a cooperative one. Uh, we, um, um, and then we took, we took actually the name Stalker later on, five years later, when we decided to do uh, the, a full tour of the abandoned areas of the city without never getting out of the city, but never stepping in something that's usually lived, frequented, built, known. So with, this, with tents, we did on foot in five days uh, this tour of the city of Rome. And then uh, we will see, we'll see some of the slides of, the, of this tour. And, but when I, uh, we, we ended up doing this map, which is kind of the logo of our work. This is the map of the city of Rome that's been uh, manipulated. Uh, uh, and it's manipulated with this basic idea. Whatever it's well known, built, construct, and what we know as being the city, it's yellow. And whatever it's void, unknown, un unaccessible, it's blue. So we, 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 we designed this map after, like we also write down a manifesto about our practice of these abandoned areas, but we did it after. The old urge, it's an experience, uh, the, the old urge of experience comes out uh, from, from just uh, uh, the experiment, from an experimental approach. All the, all the theorics that we have been attempting to do, it comes along with it after, always after. We never, we never pre-concept uh, what we are uh, what we are wondering and doing. Uh, you can see there is a white path. Maybe you don't see it very well, but there is a white path. That's, it is exactly the path we did through the city. And as you see, it's just a navigation through this blue sea uh, and through the voids of the city. Um, we can go on. Uh, yeah, I do go on. I do go forward. Fantastic. And uh, okay, this is uh, this is the first uh, the first thing. Uh, the all our work, as we said in the quote that I was using before, uh, the zones depends on you. I mean, the space that uncertain and undefined because of not well uh, order and and, uh, and, uh, and, and uh, order and defined, they can be, uh, they can, they, they're really up to you to be understood. They're up to you to be, de uh, to be described, mapped, so they're up to you to exist. And in a way, your behaviors, your gaze, and your behaviors basically uh, transform those spaces. I will try to explain this better. The first, uh, the first uh, uh, really act that allowed to change the point of view on the city and to enter this kind of space is this kind of uh, a jumping a fence or a wall, or jumping wherever, wherever this. Uh, uh, this, uh, these zones, they're limited. And, uh, and this is what has been very, very important for us because uh, uh, we realized, like through experience of that, that as soon as you do something like that, uh, the relation with space changes so much. 
it changes because you don't know where you're going, you don't know where you are, and there's a certain frightening feeling that brings you back with a primary relation with space that we probably forgot today, which includes the fact that everything becomes important. Could be a tool uh, in case of danger, could be, uh, could be also an element to uh, recognize the space in case of getting lost. Um, so we, we can, oh, it's always me. Uh, and so this is, the, we're going to go through some visions of this, uh, of this tour of the city of Rome. Uh, I guess uh, I, have, I have to say that this experience has been very particular in Rome, um, because Rome, it's, it's, it's a particular city somehow. We, we did this tour also in other cities. We did it in Berlin, in Paris, in Milan, in Naples, in New Jersey, but, and Miami. Uh, but this is, this is uh, uh, I think it's important we, we, we started in Rome, or not just because we were birthed there, but, but just because Rome, it's a strange city that really has an enormous amount of voids within its borders. Actually, it doesn't even have borders. And this is, comes along with the fact that uh, there's an, an enormous amount of uh, overlapping of different uh, uh, times uh, in the city of Rome, which includes those voids that probably were city before, or they will become city in the future, but in the moment they are totally suspended. So, and also it's an agricultural city, this is very important to say, uh, there's fields coming in very close to the city center. So it's very, it's very, an it's really much an, ar an archipelagos kind of, kind of place. And so you have these big voids where you look at the city from the outside. I mean, this is about also the, uh, and this is our camping, this is also about the gaze you get. You, st you enter this space, and then you have a total perception, different perception of the city. You look for wildness, but you don't have to take a plane. You don't have to go far away. It's just behind your corner. You just you want looking at it. So this, this, this deciding to looking at it, this wanting to looking at it, uh, it creates it somehow. And also the fact that this tour, uh, as soon as we decided to do this tour, we sent it to the press, uh, realized to, to several newspapers that were taking it. And then, uh, and then it worked also a, a level of imaginary because uh, 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 a lot of people didn't really realize that it, behind their backyard sometimes there is a brand new continuous uh, system, like organized system. Uh, we call this, uh, this kind of system, uh, this kind of voids, spaces, we call them the actual territories. So the tour of Rome was, was named Stalker through the actual territories. And uh, I want to explain that because it's, I think it's very important uh, for us. It's, uh, we, we, uh, we took this term actual from a French philosopher, Foucault, and, in, it, and, it's very, uh, and he uses it uh, uh, against contemporary. Contemporary is what we are, it's what we know we are. Actual is what we are becoming. It's somewhere uh, without, somewhere that it's like, uh, it's, it's what we are becoming, what we don't know we are. Some, sometimes it's kind of something, it gives you a gaze on the future, but it gives you a gaze on the past but it includes territories that really have no present in the actual, uh, in, the, in the contemporary space. Uh, so I, wanted to, I told you about entering this space and also uh, how about this space are very uh, changeable and, uh, and fluid and, and how this space, uh, they're mutant somehow. How the, how the uh, leftovers from the humankind relate with the, uh, with the, uh, uh, with the nature that takes over them and what they produce. And all this happens besides the control and also the, uh, the knowledge of uh, the humankind very often. So, so we decided, and uh, like, like I, I don't wanna go through, through tales, even if making tales it's one of the way we describe uh, the, the, the places we go. But uh, like this place, it's, it's an unbelievable, it's a parachute factory abandoned. And it was not mapped since uh, during the war, a parachute fa factory was not mapped. And since it was not mapped, they were trying to build a shopping mall in it and just open it and hoping that it would have worked without any plan. But they were, while, while they were doing it under construction, they broke in uh, an underground river who created a lake of fresh water. And so, so now there is this lake of fresh water when migrants' birds ended up stopping after years and years, they didn't stop anymore in the city of Rome, now they stopped there. So sometimes what we think it's entropic, it's waste, it's, it's a damage for environment, 
produces events that we don't really uh, expect, cannot control, and cannot uh, not even define. Well, this is some of the, I wanted to go first, this is gain one camp. There's also other practices. This is a strange place, very strange place, that gave, uh, very important for us because we ended up our tour here. We found this tunnel, abandoned tunnel of railway, four kilometers long, with a, with a, sub, with a railway station in it, abandoned. And uh, it was very, uh, in the, we, we, we checked it before doing the tour, and we found this place fenced, and, and we, stepped, we sneaked in, and, and then it was very, very strange. It was absolutely giving us uh, the hint to do this kind of tour, because we really entered another world. And it was even used by, but we'll see that. And also this fresh water coming out, and this fresh water would turn red because of the rust of the railways, and it did this red fresh water that was growing plants. I mean, all this, all this kind of very strange and very uh, unplanned kind of, uh, kind of situation that we are attempting to, to read. Uh, I have to say about this reading, because all, uh, I said, first of all, what we do, we, we consider it uh, as uh, spatial. Uh, space practice, and uh, so we consider it very much related with architecture. We had uh, very big uh, problems in uh, uh, in, uh, conf in uh, affirm that in saying that, especially with uh, with architects. We think that this uh, this old system of uh, um, abandoned territories uh, has somehow a very complex uh, system of uh, uh, dynamic of living and that we have not the instruments, not, even, not, not to map that, and, and for sure not to understand what's going on. And, and that's uh, the, the, end, the goal that we wanted to communicate with, with uh, two architects, is that we not presume these as a white blanket zone, but as, 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 uh, but as something that should necessarily be understood before, uh, before transform it, before plan it somehow. Uh, this is one of the few acts also, uh, also uh, we have this archipelago of the city and we were crossing it. So this, this idea of crossing has been very important to us. We were not resisting, defending the, uh, uh, a war that's losing uh, and against capitalism, you know, against the uh, incoming, uh, uh, you know, uh, increasing, uh, increasing economy. But we're just uh, crossing a world that's produced by this same system. And it's produced in a, in a huge amount and it's produced uh, for, for uh, more, it gets produced, uh, this, this kind of waste territory, it's, it's so much more, uh, th there's more of this than what we know, and what we, uh, than, than, than the territory we really know we, we, we live in. So, uh, so we believe that we don't have to defend anything, because this, is gonna, this, is gonna, this space is going to take over. For, one, for one, one square meter of land, we try to organize, plan, and, uh, and put and sell on the market. We, for, for that one meter, we probably produce 10 meters of this other land. It, it, the only thing that these places can keep change continuously. So they're very even, as we said, hard to map. And they're usually own, known as no, no site, non sites or, or, non, uh, or n n no lands. But, uh, but uh, we, we also think that uh, this is not really true. We think it's a very complex system, as I say that. And it's also uh, the fact that all this periphery, all this uh, happening, unbelievable, interesting, uh, has, no, has no name. So he invited us to name it and to map it. And so at attempting to give a, a non-deterministic, non-way uh, to, to kind of map it. Uh, that's why it's, it's Stalker is a group. It's a group done out of people that they, they produced this map. It's, so the, the, it's the work of map, it's, it's done by a multiple, a multiple points of view, and it's very subjective, and, and it's changeable. And we call it, uh, usually we call it as a, uh, we testify the territory more than map it itself, because we're not giving a, an exact definition to it. We're not thinking that an exact definition of it could be done. But then I wanted to tell you about this. Um, um, this is a, uh, one of the, something found, and something found that turned to be a celebration, that's another thing, celebrating new rights in a brand new territory, which is kind of means 
giving name to things. I mean, we took this kind of approach also from our, the Aboriginal approach to territory to have the songways, to have, to, have, uh, to have stories, to have tales, to have uh, uh, imaginary uh, describing, mapping, uh, and uh, giving information on, uh, on territory. This is one of the guy of the group who was doing, who found this cement cylinders uh, near a river in Rome and was kind of putting flour and, and wine on top of it. I mean, I mean it, it didn't mean to be something very significant, but it was actually marking a point. We have to say also that we come from a, uh, we, uh, this is another, uh, another experience of doing this, which is uh, actually a mathematician and a geologist playing music on the, on the sewage uh, system, just brand new sewer, uh, sewage sewage system just built, and the music was coming out from holes and, and for 100, 100 meters. I mean, it was uh, totally unbelievable. And, um, and uh, uh, again, again, understand, be, be in the right place in the right moment for things to happen. I mean, not, not, not wanting to change or wanting to transform or wanting to produce, but just getting in the right attitude to let things happen to you and to be capable to float and move with this happening, within this happening. Uh, sorry if I'm sometimes in English I have hard times to explain this kind of uh, concept. But then, uh, and this is again trying to explain and mapping, so this is all the territory. I wanted to say that, yes, I was saying that this is Rome, and Rome is well, it's worldwide known to be a uh, very historical uh, uh, city where everything supposedly it's already uh, done and, and nothing uh, there happens uh, somehow anymore. And also this is kind of the thinking, the major thinking in the School of Architecture in Rome, where they, 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 they really have you with, uh, with uh, historical and uh, uh, concepts. So this, uh, I think that this getting rid of this has been the, the main goal for our, for our work, getting rid of the, of the academical gaze that uh, doesn't let you uh, understand what's happening because uh, supposedly pretend already to know what happened. Which means also for us, it means not giving more importance to Roman ruins or to ele modern electric, uh, uh, electric ways or water, or, uh, or water pipes or whatever. Uh, and so putting all these things in the same level, uh, all things that they, they feel this kind of space seems to have no kind of relation. And we thought that through our path, through our naming things, through our connecting, we were actually producing some space where there was none. Okay, this is, uh, we're ending the tour. The tour ended, as I said, in this, uh, in this very special tunnel, very long tunnel that we ended up, this is from video, because uh, we couldn't take pictures, it was very dark. We even found some lights in it. We even find some, the rest of some raves inside this place. <coughs> this is again still Rome. This is the periphery of Rome, and I just wanted to show this. Uh, to, to make understand sometimes also what, what we mean uh, by uh, taking care of what happens in this between space. Uh, has to do a lot of with infrastructure. This is uh, a map of uh, different kind of infrastructure that they cross the east periphery of Rome and, um, and uh, that they, they do produce a total rhythmic and chaotic uh, kind of uh, uh, not even net but they are very straight to their purpose. They bring the water from one side to the other, but they relate known how with uh, what's happening between. So that's what also we've been proposing and we've been doing uh, uh, has been going along those kind of paths and, and see what really uh, this, uh, this, this contact with something planned somewhere else, uh, with something defined in, because it was supposedly bring the water from one city to the other, what actually produces on territory. And this is just an image to, to see how sometimes uh, things for, produced for a certain use, they turn to be things that can be used differently. This is not Rome, this is India. Uh, uh, sorry, put it up, upside down. Um, uh, again, with this work, we've been doing the, a lot of this kind of work on the city of Rome. And, uh, and also, we use the city of Rome as a playground to, uh, to several activities that were uh, related to the fact that we wanted to, to give a more complex image of this site. And uh, we also did a couple of uh, uh, intervention based on, uh, on, on, uh, on intellectuals we like a lot and they did work in Rome. 
Uh, one was about Robert Smith and, and uh, uh, the American artist, and one was uh, about uh, Pasolini, who was a, a filmmaker, writer, po uh, philosopher, Italian philosopher. Uh, this is a poem of Pasolini. We were invited an exposition uh, on site uh, to, um, we were invited just to, to participate to this uh, uh, celebration of Pasolini. So we were very tight to uh, and um, we didn't want to face all this complex intellectual work, so we decided it's to, uh, again, make some act that would uh, uh, definitely attach uh, this, uh, uh, the territory to the Pasolini work. So we found this poem with no title. It was talking about, written in the 50s, and it was talking about uh, people getting in the city from the countryside after the war, having no place to live, and living in the arches of, a, of a, an aqueduct. And then uh, uh, it goes around, it wanders around, and then under the rain, he sees the street turns blue. So all we did is uh, we went on site and uh, did paint blue 300 meters of the street along this place. This is an, another uh, celebration act for. I'm not going through the um, through the uh, Smithson work because I, I'd like to so, show some other work. Uh, before getting to what we are actually doing, I wanted to show you also this. This is another mapping and also was the first attempt to involve people in our work. Um, 3,000 of those papers were, were uh, hanging on the buses, uh, on all the buses of the city of Rome. This is, uh, uh, it's it said, I can translate it for you, it's very easily, uh, uh, everyday phenomenon. Uh, we were invited, uh, on the back of this paper there was a test that was inviting everybody who was on the bus to investigate whatever happens with lights. Uh, phen uh, phenomenon with uh, artificial or natural lights and describe in where, in which conditions and at what time it happens and give a title to it. So they could have been artists of, uh, n uh, of uh, uh, everyday phenomena. Uh, I wanted to, s okay, this is not, I wanted to, I told you that because uh, I think we really, uh, our work, uh, our main goals are basically uh, attempt to make people look at differently at things and, uh, and, in, and uh, operate on people's behaviors. We think that doing that today, we transform the space so much more than designing anything. We don't really trust in the language of architecture, and that's, uh, and that's, the, and that's the point. Also, we don't really trust in the chance that we can represent our work, and uh, we got invited by um, a gallery, a design gallery in Milan, to, and they really wanted to have all our work displayed in this place and uh, actually was the first time in gallery, and we are really had a hard problem with it because all our work is on site, all our work is catching what's happening, so it was very hard to transpo transpose it into a gallery. So what we did is uh, we asked them to uh, print on 48,000 papers uh, the, the story of our manifesto or our, our theoretical goals and the map of the city of Rome with the sites of intervention. And then, when, and then uh, we, t we tried to, we, st we spent four days uh, 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 crunching this uh, um, uh, folding, not folding, but really uh, those papers. And we filled, uh, and, uh, we filled the, the old gallery like that until a, uh, it turned to be a, like a swimming pool where people could really jump into it. And so, again, we were trying just to go through our work, even in a moment of representing it, uh, it, with a sensorial experience and also with a, a, a chaotic chance to get in touch with what our goals are. So everybody could just pick their paper, unfold them, read, and maybe put together what uh, uh, he could he make his own path through stalker work. And this is, uh, uh, this is um, the slaughterhouse. Uh, it's now uh, two years that we are, uh, after in wandering around, we are basically working on the same site. Uh, this happened to be, uh, I'm sorry this is a presentation, but it's in French, I don't have it in English. Uh, here it's the site. This site, it's, uh, it's very interesting because it's one of those border sites that they really uh, close in between the downtown city and those abandoned areas. They're kind of border space in between two. And uh, it's interesting because this roadhouse has been down of this uh, huge uh, um, square uh, structure. Actually, there's two square structures. 
Uh, there's another one on the right that we don't really get to see. And, um, and it's very interesting because it's been abandoned in 1975. And since then, the right part has been closed and checked by police because they were say, keeping their, the stolen moped. Uh, and uh, and the, the left part was left it open. So left it open and ended up being the place where all these touristic carros uh, have their stables for horses. Those are this kind of 350 horses in there. But then the gypsies picked as the perfect place to live. And since it's kind of open but fenced, I mean, for years, this has not been, uh, this has not been uh, checked. This has not been controlled. In, uh, it's, it's kind of those places where police like rather keep what they don't want to deal with. I mean, it's not just police, but the city and even urban planners. I mean, everything that has no place, proper place in the city, everything that is indeterminated, that it's mutable, that it's, uh, that it's un uh, uncontrollable, ended up being there. So there's a, there's a proper squad, that's where Gil, Gil uh, went, uh, stepped in uh, for the uh, first day, and just a few people, it's very important because not just a few people, they have you know, the, the effort to, to go actually in those kind of places. Then, uh, then there's the huge gypsy camp, the stables, and then there were also uh, some uh, North African uh, illegal, uh, and, and Senegali illegal uh, um, immigrants. Uh, uh, we got invited actually in the, other, in the other place because they were renewing it, opening it for the Biennale of Young Artists of the Mediterranean. And we were invited by the architectural section to organize a workshop. But we thought this place was very, uh, uh, they really took advantage uh, and abused this space and in kind of way of renewing it and giving a like, very neutral and, and, and simple space to everybody to work in. So we decided to participate to this, but then to do it our own way. Since in those days in Rome, there were like 3,000 Kurdish people, refugees, because of Ocalan hiding, uh, asking for asylum in the city of Rome. Uh, those people were sleeping in the gardens, and they were cardboard houses. And we ended up uh, visiting them, and we had a tea with them, and we discovered a brand new world, because in those cartoons, they had kind of little market, they had a barber shop, there of our war, but then where, and then and then at a certain point, police kicked them out of those gardens. So we thought that we should have done something for, for this situation. So we squatted actually an abandoned place in this area, and we thought to make this uh, what we called Ararat, that comes along with the um, the mountain in Kurdistan where the Noah's Arch uh, stopped, and uh, the goal was to. Uh, we had some students coming from different uh, universities for this thing, and we got them in this place. We made them live with us in this place, and we made them uh, try attempt to organize this space with the Kurdish people. Kurdish people, actually, they didn't speak Italian, most of them, uh, and, and the old situation, like refugees, I don't know if you have experience with that. It, it's people that is not immigrants that really uh, relate, uh, attempt to enter the society where they go, but they're people that just dumped somewhere and they don't really uh, know the language, have no wanting, often they're old people that they don't really think about starting a whole new life again. So it was very hard work and we decided that this place that we squatted has to be uh, shared in between us and them in a way that somehow they could have a social place where to meet but on the other end they could relate with uh, urban life so they could express all their uh, social and political issues. So this is, uh, this is the place and this is uh, uh, the students we got there, uh, that was 99. And there was a big, actually, they, they thought they came for uh, an architectural workshop and they worked like Manix for two weeks, also setting up the, and, and fixing up this, uh, a little bit this building. They were all sleeping on those kind of uh, amacas on the, on the rest, on the terrace was summer. And this is some of the friends from Kurdistan. And we all set up also this roof with where the swimming pool is and the children used to play, like Le Corbusier used to do. It, no? and, and this is storytellers. They were also collecting uh, the stories from their uh, travels from Kurdistan to, through Turkey, through Bosnia, to Italy. Usually terrible stories, especially for kids. And this is the barbershop. At the end, we almost created uh, 
we kind of uh, uh, involved the students, involved the Kurdish, and there was a huge gap in between them, I mean, in terms of understanding. And uh, we kind of uh, succeed because today this is the cultural center of uh, the Kurdish community in the city of Rome. And uh, one of the few cultural centers they have in Europe. And uh, not everything succeeded. I mean, the students made a, man a magnificent, designed a magnificent library for the Kurds, but the Kurds thought that they didn't have enough book and they needed, uh, uh, they needed wood for, for uh, the barbecue, so they destroyed it. And, uh, and, and this is kind of things that happens. I mean, that's, uh, you know, you, you, designers often, they have uh, attempt to do things for other people, but probably these people, they have their own way to look at things. But the, the, the great thing that at the end they totally accept this place. So it means that somehow we were capable to make it, to make it the way they, to make it with them and the way they were going to do it. At the end of the show, workshop, we organized this huge Kurdish uh, dinner all together on the terrace of the place. Okay, now we got inside this place and we were one of the community. I mean, there was, there was uh, stables with horseback riders, uh, carros riders. There was uh, 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 drug smugglers from North Africa and some illegal uh, immigrants from Senegal, and then the gypsy and everybody. So we decided to be part of this system. We didn't came in as being the architects who wanted to do something for the people, but we stepped in as a community, actually two communities, the Kurds and us. Obviously, probably we had less needing of being them than the others, but that was uh, that's that's also was part of the game because I was intriguing kind of everybody who was sitting there. Our first action to relate with other communities on site was uh, producing a non-identity card. Since the, uh, most of the people here they they didn't get the right to get an identity card, we thought they could have a, a brand new one, exactly just like you know the proper one, but just say non-identity card. And that was the first step to try to make uh, people feel somehow related just because they were there. So this is giving don't identity card to the gypsies. Sorry. And this giving a uh, uh, non identity card to the Senegalese. Uh, be, and after that, uh, again, mm. we started a work which was pretty much different of those listening practices of territory that when we were wandering around uh, the empty uh, areas of Rome. Uh, as somehow it's even more delicate work because it involves also people and communities. And this work, uh, we, uh, through, uh, different, uh, through different experience we have been having in time, we realized that the only way to relate uh, as, uh, in these kind of uh, places where, uh, with these communities that they really um, to get them involved in your work, you have to attempt uh, 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 very hard because it's not easy. I mean, it's not easy, and also you can always take the risk of taking advantage of them. So uh, we, uh, as, as um, we, we always try to, we always try to create some kind of uh, uh, playful device in within that was first taking the risk ourselves and putting in the game ourselves, trying to convince the other to get in the game. Uh, this is one of, the, uh, one, of the, one of the work we did. This is a Japanese friend that was coming over, because now in this place we have the Kurdish refugees, but also we have art intervention, lecture, exposition, and workshop. We did several workshops with different universities. And uh, this is an artist uh, from Japan, a friend that came and visited us, and she does uh, what she calls pop-up cafe in Tokyo. Pop-up cafe is kind of serving food in the middle of the streets to create some kind of public space where uh, there is none because major of the public space in Japan is owned by major companies. And she was explaining us of all the significance and importance of this circular uh, diagram she was designing. And we invited her to make some pop-up cafe together with us in the slaughterhouse. But that actually was some very different work. Oh, oh sorry, I put this upside down. Well, what we did in this courtyard we have down the place, we just designed this circle on ground. And you know, somewhere where there is no police control, everything that happens, it's very important for every community, for everybody. I mean, nobody, nobody puts order there for you. It's just these people that they keep themselves, the, the, the kind of uh, 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 ordering relation between communities. So as, as soon as we did something like that, they all came to us 
uh, very mad and saying, what are you going to do? Are you going to uh, make a hole? Are you going to build something? This is impossible. We have to go through with carousels. You cannot do that. I mean, everybody was complaining. But at the end, it was the starting of the game because we told them that all we wanted to do is a, a big meal that was including uh, this Japanese friend coming, so with the Japanese Kurdish gypsy menu. And uh, especially because we had some problems with Kurdish and, and gypsies that they didn't really uh, get along each other because gypsies thought Kurdish were terrorists and Kurdish thought gypsies were thief. And, um, and so, and so this, this thing uh, started to excite everybody. And so we had a very hard time to convince gypsies. At the end, through the kids, we invited the kids to stall to their family tables and chairs. And then one single family of gypsies came and cooked. So that's, uh, we had all the tables uh, around. And then in the end, we invited also the city of Rome to participate. So we had almost uh, 500 people at the end having this, uh, tasting this Japanese Kurdish gypsy menu. And, uh, and, uh, and it was the first attempt to put these two communities together. After one year from that, even more than one year from that, I have to say that now they made up their soccer team together. They have an Ararat soccer team which includes gypsies and Kurds. So we're very, so again, we're just instigate and stimulate some kind of process to create something into an, in, inside an entropic environment that could catalyze uh, negentropic, which means creative, which means order, uh, process. And then we let them go. I mean, we just, we're just not wanting to do something. We're just suggesting somehow to uh, instigate uh, a self-organization in between these people. And which is something I like to say because that makes big, pretty much the difference in uh, all, within all time kind of participating work and what we're doing now. We're, we're really much... Uh, uh, as, as we did before in, in, in crossing those territory, we're really much kept trying to catch what's happening, trying to uh, push it forward a little bit, maybe so through uh, visions or through fantasies or uh, through devices that could be playful devices. But then uh, we just, uh, and then it's the first ourself who try to, to understand what those, those devices produce. Uh, hey, this is again. Okay. And this is the courts. And this is another work we did jointly with an artist, uh, an artist from Naples, Matteo Fraterno. He came in uh, with a troupe and a, a music group from Naples. People from Naples are very loud. And uh, they all together, they came to make a movie, but not to really make a movie because they never meant to do the rest of the movie. They just came with the idea of the movie to create again this playful uh, kind of environment in within people could put his identity in the play. Because we realized that it, it, through a playful approach you can get people to risk their, you know, their identity issue. Through a serious one you never do it. And, uh, and it was fantastic because it was a faked matrimony in between a gypsy and a guy that was coming from uh, that he picked, an actor. So this actor was going, and the gypsy loved to play, and they loved the idea, and so we really had, uh, we really had the old marriage going on, and, uh, and the old party within, uh, uh, within the artist, the musician, and, uh, and, and excited the old, uh, the old situation in the slaughterhouse. Uh, I think it was a very interesting work. Now we're going to uh, 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 a different work. This is a uh, Mm, it still uh, starts uh, again in, in the slaughterhouse. And it's the work we presented at Venice Biennale and Ljubljana Biennale and in Rome at Villa Medici, which is the French Academy, where there was an exposition about contemporary art. Um, actually, I had a fellowship in the French Academy, so they, they, gave, us, they gave us the money to taste and verify this, this structure that we thought to produce. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll explain you. It's just, uh, in a way, we, we work a lot with metaphors, kind of. Uh, and uh, also because we believe metaphors are more open to be understood however people want than, you know, direct, straight concepts. So what we produce is, uh, uh, what we call this structure the transborder line. And this transborder line is just simply a concept that becomes an object. And the concept is very, single, it's very simple. It's uh, the barber wire that usually it's a symbol of uh, uncrossable borders that turns to be a wider, wider space, hospitable and crossable. 
So it turns, we, were, we actually proposed a whole uh, transform the borders, uh, especially uh, we, we were on the border in between uh, Italy and Slovenia, which means the border of west and east before, and now means the border between inside Schengen and outside Schengen. And, uh, and, uh, and so we were proposing this infrastructure to support the free circulation of people. And uh, we were proposing uh, to enlarge borders to make the place where diversities could relate before, uh, the, the, where diversity could relate. I mean, instead of having a, a straight border, we needed some misunderstandable place where people could attempt to, you know, to get the, to relate with something that, with someone and something that's on the other side. On the other side. Also, there was a very big political issues because in those days and still today, we have a big problem with uh, criminalizing clandestine in Italy. I mean, the government just criminalized people that illegally uh, come inside the nation, even if they're just uh, uh, probably families or poor people, but supposedly illegal and criminal, it turned to be kind of the same thing. So we wanted to give, uh, since we were in Venice Biennale, we wanted, we had uh, the stage where, where to present some kind of, this kind of political issue. Okay, this is the, sorry for the question. This is the first uh, attempt we did of this structure that we did it inside uh, the Villa Medici, just uh, French Academy. And then uh, again, in the same courtyard, uh, since uh, we, we tested the structure was tr trustable, and uh, again we brought the cable as something new to happen, and we started uh, to build it because we have obviously the main place where, where, where we wanted to put the cable. This, this transporter line has been put at, uh, in the Slaughter, as, as I said, in the Manifesta Tre Ljubljana in uh, Venice Biennale, and we'll see illegally on the border in between Italy and Slovenia. Okay, this is the Venice Biennale. It's, uh, I wanted, I'll, after I go to the website, to show you also the story of the ball, because the, the game we produced at the Slaughterhouse was the Globe Bowl game, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, the adventure of the Globe Bowl game and the transporter line. And uh, um, we'll see through the website later. We, we actually threw 2,000 balls in the court of the uh, Slaughterhouse, and everybody came along to play. And then we gave them pens and, uh, uh, to write desires or stories or, or, or wantings uh, uh, or their issues that we, we on those boats that we brought to to Venice and to Ljubljana. This is bringing the cable inside Ljubljana manifesto. And this is uh, actually uh, uh, the thing because. Uh, Already this border was in between art and architecture. Ljubljana was an art biennale, uh, Venice was an architecture biennale, but also was in between East and East, as we said. So we asked the curator of Manifesta to get a truck to bring the cable on the border. So he gave us a truck under no name. He said he never, uh, in, we never asked him and he knew anything about it, but he actually gave us the truck. So we ended up uh, bringing this, uh, sorry, I will see this on the website. We actually built it, and it's still there sitting in the, in the frontier with two borders where clandestine usually cross over. Uh, can we go on the website? Should I turn this off? I invite you to, to, to see the website. I'm not going to read the, the whole approach we had to this uh, project, but I just wanted to show you.
this is the uh, sorry, Just going to show you the global game in the world's growth of storylines. Going to some more images of the place. This is inside when it's been now with all the boards. At the end we invited a lot of arti oh, architects in the Biennale to go with the boards out of the Biennale with us and we made it all the way to Piazza San Marco when we got a declaration for playing soccer in public space. Just wanted to see this is the place where we were at the Arsenal at the Venice Biennale. Okay, I want to I want to show you one last work. I'm going to try to go very fast because I really like uh, to have a little bit of discussion if it's possible after because I don't really uh, I, I hate to have this monologue and just have me talking. Um, what I wanted to show you it's um, it's the latest work we did and. Uh, <coughs> It's, uh, it's a big work that we did with the Kurdish community. For the first time, we actually, yeah, already with the transborder line, we designed something. But in this case, uh, since it was, uh, we did a really, this is a very big designing work in the end. It turned out to be. And uh, hopefully, uh, we, we were actually uh, uh, really interested to preserve a certain process in doing it. But at the end, also, the object turned to be very symbolic and very, and very somehow beautiful and very beautiful for the Kurdish that they were co-authors uh, with us of the old work. Um, this work comes along uh, with a um, um, uh, command, command uh, with an ask, request, from the uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs and the Foundation in Sicily. Uh, the request was to represent uh, a 12th century chapel in Palermo called Cappella Sistina, who was done by the Arabs into an exposition that was going to tour the Mediterranean. And, um, and uh, we got asked to do that uh, through a multimedia uh, uh, like uh, system. They were wondering, they couldn't bring the chapel with them. The chapel was, but the very important thing of this chapel that we reproduce in this three-dimensional model, the very important thing of this chapel is that it was a Catholic chapel but done by Arab uh, handcrafters. So it was totally uh, a mix-up of cultures uh, of, the 12th, of the 12th century. And, um, and, uh, uh, and so uh, we thought that we wanted, uh, we liked uh, a lot the idea of also if copying or representing something, it was not exactly our, uh, our, our goal. But then we thought instead of reproduce the chapel or cre create a device of, of, uh, uh, of um, videos and slides of, and, and that would represent this chapel, we, we thought to re remake it. Remake it totally different, but very, uh, but very um, in terms of measures and in terms of space, exactly the same. So we made a one-to-one one -one scale of this chapel, and we did it in, uh, in uh, ropes uh, with uh, um, um, metal, uh, with, with this metal cylinder on the end. Uh, this is the attempt. It's a, it was very stupid because I don't know if you ever saw this game. So you push your hands 
and the and, and design of your ends come out. Well, we did this with the with a 40 square meters uh, surface. And, uh, and to do this, actually, the goal was first to make all the community work at it, to work at something they were also the authors, and to make them very proud of their work. Also because proud is something that really refugees kind of lose uh, in, their, in, in, their, in their being uh, uh, where they are. And uh, so it took, uh, it actually took us two months. We made we had the chance to make 20 people working for two months on this project. We made um, we made this uh, we designed this uh, this three-dimensional uh, model, and out of that, uh, this is a, a section of it. This is a, uh, just a section. Of it. And then we we cut it in every 2.5 centimeters. We made a section of it. So we had 1,700 se sections of these things, each one out of 24 ropes. So in the hand, there were like uh, 48,000 ropes. And this is some of the section we produced. We printed it in the real scale so that we could start working together with the course, cutting the ropes, and then printing the touch. I want to show you a, just a very short video about that. And, um, and this is, yeah, this is the plan of the ceiling. And here we go. And this is some pictures of it when it's finished. And now this working, I mean, it, it, it actually, it's the first time so we produced it, uh, an object, but it, uh, as I said, it comes from a long process. The process was reinventing, re, uh, reinventing the, the, the relation in between East and West that produced the chapel in the 12th century, reinventing today, working with the refugees from Kurdistan. Refugees, Kurdistan people, they are into uh, carpets, and these all, these all ropes, they are tight. We call it this fl the flying carpet. And so somehow then we decided also to bring it farther down, closer to the people in a way that people could sensibly touchable. And also since there was uh, this copper uh, ending cylinders, it was also sounding and also was creating a certain experience uh, of space, very, basically very different from the original one. But we, you know, we, we just had the chance to do this, so we, we, we made it this way. I want to show you a short video on the fabrication of this uh, work. And then I would really like to maybe have some little bit of discussion.
keep instigating those kind of uh, what we call creative devices, which are uh, the attempt to, to involve people somewhere, somehow, that we would never imagine or, uh, or want to do. I think it could really work. I mean, we really have uh, some problem with, especially with, uh, uh, it's true with, uh, somehow with the Anglo-Saxon world, because uh, in the Anglo-Saxon mean, uh, it means uh, something bad, not just in between. And, uh, and <laughs> you know, in meantime, mean space, and some mean architecture that we want to do. And, uh, and, and this is, it's true, everything here is absolutely defined. I mean, uh, in the States, we had really had problems with, with uh, crossing fences. They could shoot us. I mean, the problem is already doing something uh, that's really uh, far away. And, and also try to get, uh, now with the, for, for New York, like, we, we have also, again, we have to, 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 to create this kind of informal and uh, in, uh, in kind of embarrass space where we could meet with other people. And I think, uh, Language probably it's, 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 a big, uh, it's a big thing. Uh, we love to work on, 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 on the idea of misunderstanding each other. As I said before, when you clearly seem to understand, you don't understand. Maybe if we start to misunderstand each other, maybe each one can come back home thinking they understood something different, but already we're attempting something. And now we're working on saying that New York, uh, October 30, we're starting uh, a storefront, a work about uh, languages. Uh, actually, in New York, there's probably all the languages the world, and, but everybody's speaking English, and probably mm -hmm. in speaking English, uh, they're probably losing a lot of their own word that they cannot traduce, tra traduce uh, translate. Uh, they cannot translate. And so we want to we wanna, uh, explore this kind of uh, uh, actual territory, which is the non-overlapping in between languages. And the project's name is uh, All the Americans Will Never Know About the World. Uh, and, it's, and also, I think that this is from language, it's going to turn into space because language means something. So it means probably some, some, some space to be able to do that. And, and I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But we already did it. Uh, I've been very fast to the website. We have a huge website which is just stalkerlab.it and uh, with more than 100 pages. Stalkerlab.it. We've been doing this in Miami. I mean, uh, uh, we were invited there to work on this abandoned river, uh, Miami River, and uh, there was no perception of this space because it was abandoned, so it was not existing at all. And the only perception people had is because the bridge is open to let the ship by. And uh, so we organized this uh, stupid event to make a <coughs> free bridge coffee. And we were offering coffee to people, inviting them to get off the cars and put it to realize that they were close to the river in the meanwhile. Gave it in and, uh, and I, I think, I think uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, our work is contextual and, and it's processual. It's, uh, it's relation, uh, relational and processual. And I think uh, we need to, to work on, the, on, the, on the strategies to, to get in the proper context, context of different. But I mean, uh, more it's, uh, more it's uh, un un improbable and more it's uh, interesting.
after a very sympathetic interview with the case of the police and, the and try to also get involved in uh, what it could, how it could be possible. It's true. Somewhere it couldn't be possible. And uh, somehow, somehow still, a lot of places it's not possible. And we always are tempting to do one little step forward without getting out. It's like, make a, we don't want to step, it's not that we think that behind that wall, that's the truth, and we all have to move there and defend it. We just think that in, in that in-between line, it's the, it's the chance to make a communication between two worlds and taking this risk and just making them communicate. I mean, as we get to the point that it's getting very risky, we already make one step yeah, and, but, but we already push a little bit that line forward, forward a little bit. And that's always what we're trying to do. It's true. I mean, I most sometimes like, I, I have to say that I feel most scary in London Friday night walking in the street with these strong people just teasing you that then go around in those places. But uh, uh, and now we're. You don't go alone. Pardon? You don't go alone. No, you don't go alone there. No, you're not tough. You're not cool. We are totally frightened when you do it. Totally frightened. I mean, and. Uh, and that's why, I mean, that's an important feeling. I also, this comes also from the movie, I think. Because if you remember the movie, yeah. the guy who goes there is not that he's stuck. I mean, he's totally scared of, of, about this changing world. But, and also, he never gets to the, to the magic room where desire gets become true. Just keep going forward, keep going forward, back and forth. And also, it's very easy that it brings scientists and artists at the same time. Because the only thing, when we say work disciplinary, how can work a discipline? How can we call art a disciplinary work? I believe that whatever, wherever you find out of your discipline the tools to resolve a problem that through the discipline the major uh, academical cannot resolve, you are an artist. And I mean, to me, artist is that. And if it's that, I'm an artist. Otherwise, if that's architecture, I'm an artist. And, uh, and, and I don't know, it's like... Uh, and but it's, now we are trying, uh, uh, talking about East, we are trying to bring this, we are in a Venice Biennale game for art. And uh, Ljubljana, and um, Tirana, Albania, and uh, Sarajevo. So we're trying to bring this whole thing through the borders of uh, from Italy to Albania, uh, Montenegro, uh, Croatia, uh, Bosnia, Croatia, Slovenia, Italy, Turkey. And we'll see. This is not really guaranteed. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I think we will get there. But he had a question. Oh, he had a question. You had a question before. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, No, it's, it's, true. it's not similar, it's changes by city to city. Already when we did Milan, that was the first one we did, we discovered some different patterns. It was very, I didn't mention this, but we were arguing and talking a lot, and, and while we were building up this project, we are friendly astrophysician, because he was working on a uh, universe model uh, on fractal structure. And so we were giving him images, and, and, and he was giving us like kind of theories. <laughs> And so we also on the on clusters and organization of uh, empties, uh, relation with the empties and void. And, and, uh, and I have to say that uh, Rome and Berlin, by chance, they're more similar. Even if the voids in Berlin somehow are more planned than the voids in Rome, which are more rough, more... Uh, but also it's true that in, in Berlin, not, not in there, because in there you don't get seen, but once you try to you know, you cross the street, my friend who loves to celebrate, he keeps going around with the flower. He was just tracing the 47 parallel on the soil of Berlin and he got stuff like this. It's true. Sometimes for stupid. But I wouldn't say that, I wouldn't go too cliche because uh, then you go, when you get to these spaces, uh, uh, the kind of relation it's all to invent. I mean, you're, you're meeting someone who's probably more frightened than you somehow because he's hiding or. Or sometimes you need the owners. I mean, and 
the owner is the owner anywhere. I, mean, uh, I don't know, it, but it's true that this, uh, we, we attempt also map because we need Paris too. And sometimes it's the scale is different because uh, if, you, if you look at those clusters of this yellow blue relation, like in Milan it's more dense, you see, it's not like row, but then there is a big, a wider void around that they're not being created. Actually, we find very, very much room like the view. And I'm very curious in London yesterday, Gil took me for this walk along uh, an abandoned railway. Uh, and uh, the first time I perceived a space that was not planned. Here, even the void is very much you know, planned and all that. And maybe we should, yeah. That would be very interesting to try to do this work in, in, in London. Yes, as I said, we are uh, pretty much interdisciplinary and we are not always the same range of people. It depends on projects, there's a few people that they really follow the old work all the time and a few people that just get interested in something and they get in and it's And also it's open because also we relate with people that comes by very often, like Japanese artists. We need always, because we really believe that we need new energy to keep going on this work, which is all about crossovers. And, uh, and how it comes, usually it comes from um, uh, saying uh, uh, stu very stupid things and it's kind of brainstorming about stupid things and playing with words and games and then starting from them seeing, figure out if there's some uh, lots or some gaps in, in between uh, terms or if just uh, uh, some ideas could, uh, uh, it happens by chance. I mean we create a kind of environment in between us where we try to get advantage of chance. I mean that's the only, it's a disponibility, we call it a listening disponibility. Like you, you dare try to get to understand what's really interesting. I mean, like you start searching in this room and finding something very interesting happening somewhere in the corner. I'm sure about it. You can travel, you know, on on a uh, on a restaurant after everybody finished to eat. You can you can travel through that. Even I don't think it's a it's a just a question of attitude. You know? And also how ideas get uh, implemented or how we pick one idea better than another. And this comes along with uh, everybody recognizes a certain point that this idea could work and that idea could not work. And the only very hard thing in the beginning is, uh, uh, it, it's, uh, don't be, you know, we're all very uh, egoistic in a way and very selfish, very, so we always want to say more than we're sometimes, we have to say. And, but then when you do that, I mean, uh, uh, you, you, your group realizes it somehow and we, we, always, we make a lot of fun of each other about that. So, uh, so the idea comes of by, by the end of everybody, through everybody. So we just uh, let it, and also this is very important for us, a group is not just a place where different work of different people meet, but it's basically somewhere what we really, we really do together. And we really do, we open with whoever comes in. We're not defending stuff or structure from any, uh, who really wants to contribute or uh, uh, share work that does it. We actually we love it, it can be filmmakers, uh, Open up. It can be a, uh, we really believe in the chance that someone new comes, there's new chance that something never happened before can 